Hey everybody, it's Triple L coming to talk about One Piece Chapter 1000. We're finally here, Straw Hat Luffy. The chapter features Luffy punching Kaido. I've been saying it for a week, Edens. You know, we already talked about it, Edens. We already know, but oh my gosh. Actually happened. I'm, I, that's what I was thinking. Uh, that seemed about appropriate for Oda. I know people were hoping that we were going to get an update on the rest of the world. But nah, man. Nah, nah. That's too much to hope for. This is the manga where... The Straw Hats were able to get away by getting in the mouth of a uh, sea giant. It's different. Anyway, for chapter 1000, uh, you know, it's a chapter that's all about, like, pumping Luffy up kind of thing. You know, like, it's Ace premising, like, hey, don't make fun of him. Yamato drawing comparisons, saying that she would never make fun of him. And then we got, at the end of the day, of the day just Luffy attacking um, Kaido. There's a lot of really hype moments. The spread of five supernova versus Kaido. And Big Mom, obviously amazing. It looked great. Uh, we're going to take it in order here, though, just to make sure that we don't miss anything. Um, and I might miss a few points here as well because I'm not uh, fully remembering some stuff here. Anyway, let's just get into it very quickly. Uh, so first page, what I want to say is that we see that the Musketeers um, cleared a way for Luffy. I do love that uh, Luffy leaves them on a positive, a positive note talking about how much he admires them. You know, just when they protected uh, Rizo's life and all that. After that, we have a really weird sequence, which honestly only makes sense with One Piece's lack of fleshed out power acknowledgement. It's that page where Marco is dealing with the two dinosaurs. I mean, there's a lot of weird things in this page, but we're in a new world and people still have the ability to say the line, damn it, what kind of power is this? Is he invisible or invincible or what? And it's like, this is like people being surprised that Sanji can fly. This is like people being surprised that Sanji can light his legs on fire. How many times are we going to have this very expositionary, lowbrow, like kind of dialogue? I think it's extremely unreasonable that contemporaries on the same ocean don't know Marco the Phoenix's powers. What are these pirates doing that they never hear about each other's abilities? This is just odd and strange. Um, it's just, this This is probably the thing that always catches me off guard. There's just such a general lack of awareness about the power sets in the universe. But at the same time, it's like the new world is where all the different powers are, they end up congregating because that's where everyone's competing for the final slice of the pie. Um, so, you know, seeing Queen, who's supposed to be this top person in Kaido's area, commenting on, on, on Marco, when you live in a world of One Piece where there's underground brokers and people doing negotiations and all that kind of stuff, that you don't know about these little things is just, it's odd. It's an odd, you know, you know what I mean? Like, you would expect these people to be more aware of each other's powers, but they're not. It's just weird. It just it just really messes with my sense of just how connected the One Piece world is. Um, and ultimately, like, you know what? Queen isn't, like, the best example because Queen's the kind of person that thinks it's okay to do sumo. Um, but then again, it's just... It's just so odd <laughs> um, seeing this kind of gap between the awareness of powers. Like, this isn't East Blue where people didn't believe that Devil Fruits existed. This is the new world. Again... I just expect these. I expect better from these people. That said, Queen's showing something that I find really weird. What is going on with Queen's neck here? There's a bolt. There's like some kind of. Tw What's going on with his neck? This doesn't make sense. I don't fully understand what is going. Why does it look like his neck was lopped off and replaced with a machine? That wasn't the case in the previous one. It's just so weird. It's Oda trying to say that he squeezed his neck into a tube to elongate it or something. It's just. It's just so odd. Honestly, the fact that Marco is even able to handle the two on his own. Like, what does it even say about the Whitebeard crew's ultimate potential here? <laughs> what a what a time. Anyway, um, the next couple pages is, uh, of course, the build-up about what Odin said. It's really interesting that Odin picked out 20 years specifically that a group of young and powerful pirates will arrive. Really weird. Um, I do wonder again, Toki, could you see the future? Because if you could see the future, that what I'm really thinking is like, we're still expecting Nine Shadows to take on Kaido. And it's like, we got five up there. I would love to see more. Um, another thing that I was thinking about as I was going through the pages, I was really wondering if maybe 
Um, Luffy didn't initially say he wanted to be the king of the pirates. Because I remember that flashback with Sabo and all that. And I remember sometimes people were saying that maybe Luffy didn't say he wanted to be the king of the pirates, but something more. But with the way that Yamato is talking about it, saying that a big figure um, said the same thing. And Yamato is saying... Uh, okay, so the way it works, Yamato said in her mind that the king of the pirates also said the same thing. She never vocalized those words, instead saying there's a certain big figure that also said the same thing to uh, Ace. The way I'm seeing it here, it does seem like it's still about being the King of the Pirates, because that makes sense, but I, I really hope that there isn't some other thing that Luffy said along with it. Anyway, um, it was actually cool to see how uh, Ace got the Vivre card, and then, let's see, after that, and let's see, we have the general situation of everyone showing up. So again, the double spread was pretty cool. It's funny to see Spin, uh, not Spinner, because <laughs> he spins a lot. Uh, it's funny to see Killer up there, because Killer is the kind of guy that whose name is Killer. Uh, but yeah, no, the, like the idea of Kid, Zoro, Law, and Luffy up there, like Law's already like d done what he needed to do. Um, it's cool to see the five of them up there. I do think it's funny that Law's the kind of guy that can just go up there whenever he wanted to, and that's just very much what he did. Uh, but seeing the five of them face two of the Yonko, that's going to be pretty great. I do hope more people arrive, but it's honestly a question of who else is going to arrive. I mean, at this point, Jinbei's taking on a captain. Sanji's busy with a captain that honestly is a little bit more dangerous for him than anyone else there in that, in that building. Um, and then we have Frankie. We have like the big players of the Straw Hats in check. And given that right now we're talking about the next generation of powerful pirates, you know, this... This is going to be interesting to see if there are going to be four more people arriving here and to see who's going to be potentially helping. Anyway, after that, we have like the big showcase of Luffy, like helping out um, the nine that were taken down. Um, it's good to know that they're all very much alive. And again, good to see Law helping out there and pulling them away. I like that Law looked very somber with it. Uh, good move on his part. And then after that, we go into, of course, Kaido's swipe. Luffy gets above him. So Lu Luffy still has high mobility. Uh, Kaido taking that hit makes sense to me because Kaido's never the one to shy away from a hit. He's a tanker, not a dodger. Um, but he does seem to get pretty well hurt. Uh, Luffy uses Red Rock, and in the fan translations, they're calling it uh, Rock as in R-O-C-K. Uh, I do think there's enough reason to say that that might actually be Rock R-O-C, which refers to a mythical large bird monster kind of thing. Um, that makes more sense considering Luffy's naming convention. Uh, when it comes to this kind of stuff. Now, looking at this whole thing with Kaido, we st do see that Kaido's head burst into flames, kind of. Hockey flames or whatever, like Luffy does. Um, so that's pretty neat. It's cool to see uh, Big Mom have that little panel of shock. I'm ultimately very excited about this chapter. I think this was really neat. Um, I want to see more. Again, the image of the five facing down the two. I really do hope we see four more. And when we're talking about the future, like I'm not expecting like high level team play. The only ones that should really be pulling off high level team play are Killer and Kid together. And then Luffy, Law, and Zoro together. Um, if we do high level team play with, between these two factions, that's just more icing on the cake, right? Uh, one thing I will say here is that I really hope this is the moment where Zoro unleashes Azura. Um, I think this would be a worthy opponent. Time to reveal how powerful Zoro is. This is probably going to be the fight that actually pushes him. Um, Zoro right now is coming in there with Enma. He's coming in there with the. Uh, he's coming in there with a lot of Ryoma uh, energy. So I do hope he gets to take a couple of shots on that dragon. But I do hope we get to see four more people arrive to help. Don't know who those four will be, but it would be wonderful if we got that. One more thing is Zeus is like super high energy, but then you have like derpy kind of sun guy. I forget his name. Prometheus. It's just kind of funny that he looks so happy right now and not menacing the way that Zeus looks. Anyway, everyone, uh, that is this chapter of One Piece, chapter 1000. I think great way to start the 1000s with that mighty punch. Hopefully Kaido doesn't get up from it that easily. It looks like he took like a nice big hit from that. I hope he's going to be happy with that hit. Uh, we'll have to see though uh, with these five coming. At the end of the day though, like even though you have five of them here, like it's probably going to be Luffy versus Kaido at the very end. Uh, right now we got to see how we're going to get rid of Big Mom. That's going to be the big question here. Although I, I feel like Kid could be the one to handle her. Kid and Killer together could probably just try and deal with her. She's low on souls, so they're, they've got her at a good spot here. 
they should have made more pictures of uh, the mother so they could break. That'd be pretty funny. Anyway, everyone, let me know what you thought down below. And until next time, I hope you have an absolutely great day.